Hey guys, one of the biggest talkers yesterday related to the car fires was the debate between whether or not climate change impacted the length of our fire season. Now, the counter argument to climate change is what people are calling mismanagement of the land. Now, this group of people, they believe that if the proper agencies consistently cleared all of the underbrush and the overgrowth, then we wouldn't have so many fires to deal with. One viewer even went so far as to say that climate change has been debunked. So I want to bring in my favorite climate person, my favorite weather person, Mr. Rob Carl Mark, to help me sort through this, sir. Yes. You ready for this? The, yes. And this is this is a hot topic because, okay. you know, we, we see the images mm -hmm. were affected by this either directly okay. or indirectly through smoke. Uh, and so we all want to figure out why this is happening, because yeah. clearly this is unsustainable for the for the state. So I want to address this first group of people mm -hmm. and ask, is there any merit to climate change being the chief reason why we have a longer fire season? Well, I think when you look at as a whole what's happening up and down California, whether it's okay. at the coast or in the Sierra or the coastal range, you know, all these local fire departments and the people that have been in one spot for 30, 40 years mm -hmm. working on these fires, they are all saying the same thing in regards to their local area, that they've never seen anything like this before. Right. You hear that quote from so many different fire captains up and down the state. So, uh, you know, you have to look for something that's unifying for the mm -hmm. state, even though all these types of fires, how they start and what they're burning through are all different. Yeah, and especially people in our comments are saying that, guys, I've never seen a fire like the one we had back right. in December. So mm -hmm. to the climate change, what other fires have we seen that speak to something like that? Well, what you have to look for is if you want to talk about climate change, mm -hmm. it, it's basically what you assume about how things go in California. We know that there's a long dry season in the right. middle of the year, and then we get our rainy season, and the fire season basically goes away. Mm -hmm. But we're seeing it not go away, and we're seeing massive, large fires break out completely out of season. So when something happens like that, you mm -hmm. have to consider, well, is the climate the way that we know it, or has something changed, i.e. climate change? So then what about the mismanagement of resources okay. that people are talking about? What does that mean for us in Northern California? Well, this is a really key point, and I want to show you the way that this has played out over the years, because okay. I think it's an excellent point, and the U.S. Forest Service is acting on this point. So let's show you a couple of things here. First of all, back in the day, this is in general what a lot of forests look like. Big trees with some undergrowth. And the big trees, by the way, the leaves spread out, that's basically the canopy, so there was very little undergrowth. And over the years, the way that the forests were managed were they would take out the big trees and there's a lot more undergrowth. And you can see this. So you have this group, the Public Policy Institute of California. Over the years, you're looking at the 30s, which is back in the day, oh, yes. uh, the orange there, and then the blue, which is where we are. You could see that we had small trees, medium trees, and large trees. And now, and I think this is remarkable, okay. you, maybe you don't know this, we actually have more trees now than we did in the 30s, but it's mostly small and medium-sized trees, which are much more susceptible to being burned in these fast-moving fires. So huh. yes, if you were able to manage that, could you change the nature of the fires and what it burns and how quickly it burns? In some of these forests, perhaps the answer is yes. Because you see that, that this is the way that it looks. Mm -hmm. There's some trees, they'll live, but the small ones, they will burn very fast hot and the fire moves very quickly. So there is an excellent point to that. And again, a point that's so well made that the US Forest Service acts on that. Right, so my question is, are these little trees as a result of climate change? And if they're closer to the ground, water doesn't have to get so high to make sure that they're green all the time? It's an excellent point. It's something that perhaps is something that will change. What mm -hmm. we're seeing uh, with a big infestation of the bark beetle, which is taking out these large older trees, right. uh, over time you will see probably an increase in more small trees. And that's just mm -hmm. nature taking its course, but perhaps responding to warmer temperatures, yeah less snowpack, bigger periods of drought, that's when you tend to see the bark beetles really take over is when it's dry, hot, with very little rain. Got it. So uh, as always, we like to answer your questions from Facebook. So Kayla Burke, mm -hmm. she chimed in and she said that they start to clear out the forest and work on clearing projects every mm -hmm. year, but then you have locals complain about them doing these burning projects. So how are you ever supposed to get ahead? Exactly. And we have to just be realistic about this. Mm -hmm. Remember, the, the national forests, you know, and we have private forests, and we have we, the terrain that tends to burn with these fires, right. it's a mishmash of who owns it, who manages it. But the reality is, is that this is very expensive, it's mm -hmm. very difficult, and in many places it's not feasible. I want to show you some video. This is from the Rim Fire. This is back in 2013. Okay. And what happened there was, this was one of the largest fires in state history. It burned through a number of different types of forests, either private or public. And uh, that one was in the middle of a very long drought, the peak of the drought. 
So with some management of this, i.e. clearing out the brush, mm -hmm. could it have made a difference? I think in some sections of that forest, yes, it could have. Okay. But you also have wilderness areas where you can't use anything mechanized, no bulldozers, no chainsaws, nothing like that. So it would be difficult to have that one type of solution mm -hmm. for the entire forest. But I want to tell you the other thing, and let's get back to climate change, because I think that this is really important. Okay. We'll go ahead and go back to my graphics so you can see another point of this. As we switch over, it is just simply not feasible to clear out the underbrush for all of these types of forests. And the other thing, and where climate change becomes an important point and something to consider in all of this, okay. is that this is Big Sur. Look at the terrain just off to the left of the screen there. Grassy. Uh, yeah, grassy, chaparral. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as quote unquote forest management in places like that because the terrain doesn't, it, it's not m manageable. It's low lying shrubby grasses and things that grow there naturally. And when we're seeing more bigger fires break out in those places, uh -huh. then you take forest management out of the equation and you have to consider, well, what about in those types of climates? Are we seeing the same type of quote unquote, I've never seen anything like this? Right. And the answer is yes. And I think the key in understanding all of this is the Thomas fire. Tell me this more. recently happened. This is the terrain where the Thomas fire was burning through. Uh, I believe we have video of this as well. And it's low lying scrublands. It, it is, is in, the yeah, this is in southern, southern California. And yes, there are some pine forests intermixed with this the, of the terrain that it burned. But what we saw is a fire that was faster, hotter, burning through more terrain than we've ever seen in the state of California. Now, understand that's for recorded history. I understand right. that before that. There are things that have happened in the past, and we need to consider that because there's things that we know and yep. there's things that we don't know. But what I can tell you is this, and we'll go ahead and go back to my graphics, uh, is uh, that we have to consider this. Okay. What's this that? is your classic bell curve. When do these things happen? They happen in the summer. Right. Then the Thomas fire happened completely outside of anything that we've ever recorded in California before. So what is the normal span for fire season? What are those summer months that we're looking at there? So the biggest fires in state history, size-wise, not destruction-wise, which is different, uh, you could see basically the, from June, July, August, September, October, it's never we've never had a big one in November and then we had the biggest one ever happen in December so you have your bell curve and at the at least looking at this mm -hmm. it appears as though it's shifted over so yes consider forest management and yes consider some localized issues perhaps right. it's people moving into more areas perhaps it's power lines perhaps it's just a whole bunch of natural events that have just occurred one after the other which can happen right. you can have clusters of naturally occurring things but here's something else that we monitor we write down, we record, we calibrate, we try and figure this out. Notice the trend for all of these. Your daytime highs, your average temperatures, and even temperatures in the morning across the state of California, you could see the trend. There's one clear trend, mm -hmm. and it's up. So I know that people are entrenched in their opinions. Right. And wouldn't it be great if, if it was just one thing? And right. one thing that we could control. Perhaps if we just went into these forests and we cleared out the underbrush, we could solve this problem in California. And maybe that's part of the solution for certain forests, for certain areas, mm -hmm. especially where people live, especially at your house. They talk all the time, defensible things space. Things you can do, exactly. That's managing your own personal forest in some of these places. But there are other things that are going on that are bigger that I would, in my opinion, I think that you should at least consider as part of the equation in our understanding of what's going on and maybe the best methods to try and plan for this kind of stuff in the future. Because as we all know, it's a statewide problem it's different areas, it's at the coast, it's in the mountains, it's everywhere, and we all have to deal with it. I love it. Paula Cox, she chimed mm -hmm. in and said that she thinks, just to what you said, both climate change and management have responsibility in this. Mm -hmm. Because when you have a bell curve, you don't get an outlier on a bell curve with just one factor, usually. Right. It's usually a whole host of things that cause something to happen outside of the norm. Right. And the only way you're getting a Thomas fire, mm -hmm. okay, in December, which has never happened before, yeah. is if you have extreme heat, extreme temperatures, extreme drought, extreme dry conditions, and the possibility for a spark at that moment, either natural, and usually it's not natural, it wasn't mm -hmm. lighting, but usually it's man-made, either intentional or accidental, but, right. but you're only gonna get that if everything is ready to go and ready to burn, and we, don't see, we just don't see that in December in California. No, but we and did, and it happened. The car fire that we're talking to you guys about and mm -hmm. what spurred this whole conversation was started by an automobile that malfunctioned, mm -hmm. and that's what started the fire. So guys, if you want more information on the car fire or just to follow Rob's fabulous weather, climate, experience, expertise, just go to abc10.com and that's where we'll have all of the information that you need.